Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to our weekly tax uh, seminars. So today our topic is uh, charitable strategies. So we want to really dig into charitable strategies and uh, understand and uh, truly um, take advantage of it. Uh, uh, so before we dive into the charitable strategy, we want to do a quick review of uh, um, the overall thinking, right? So we have this uh, six dimension view of tax. The first is the intention. So the intention is uh, that uh, the tax law is to encourage citizens to take care of uh, ourselves, uh, our business, our community, so that the government does not have to, okay? So taking advantage of these incentives, it's a good citizen, good behavior. And then the type of uh, income, I'll talk a bit later, and then the structure and then the deductions. Uh, the strategies, there are only three strategies, deductions, shifting, and exemptions. And then the vehicles, you know, real estate, business, tax saving, that's how you create wealth. And then the content, really, uh, you want to understand the content inside the context of these you know, five dimensions. Uh, this way, it will help you to um, utilize the content. So three types of income. One is earned income, one is capital gain, and one is passive income. So, um, and today, we, when we talk about uh, charitable uh, donations, the capital gain is a great type of income to donate because you have two advantages. One is you escape the capital gain tax. Two is uh, you get the full deduction of the market value uh, for the uh, appreciated stock or real estate or business uh, that you donate to your charitable um, whatever vehicle uh, we can talk, we'll talk about. So let's review the tax framework, right? The tax framework here is income. Now the income section, we all know the wages, and in, but here is an important part is like partnership, you know, the K-1s, uh, that's important. And, uh, and then uh, we have the IRAs and yeah, then the itemized deduction, that's where the contribution is. That's where, you know, the big deduction things. Okay. <clears throat> And then uh, the pass-through entity, that's important. The pass-through means uh, the entity itself uh, does not pay tax. It's, it's not a tax entity. Uh, it's only a pass-through. It's an informational tax return uh, with an LLC. It's 1065. Um, and then uh, later on, I'll give you an example about a charitable LLC, how to use that structure. And then these pass-through entities, right? You have partnership, LLC, corporation. So corporation itself is actually a tax uh, entity by itself. Now LLC, you can select to uh, use it uh, as a, a partnership or uh, S corp or C corp. So LLC is actually the most flexible one. And uh, um, now I wanna say the tax code Really, if you simplify it, it's just red light and green light. So red light, pay tax. Green light, you can, you don't have to pay tax, okay? So here we look at uh, section 170, charitable contributions, you get a deduction. And then 501c3s, these are exempt organizations, whatever you make inside of that, right? You don't have to pay tax uh, unless it's so-called um, unrelated business tax. Now you don't want to do unrelated business. You just use whatever the issue related, including service fees, right? It's all exempt. So we want to take advantage of this. So today we really want to focus on taking advantage of this section and this section. And these are from tax perspective, it's just a great, great tax shelter that we can utilize, okay? And of course, there's also a great cause and create a social impact on that. So that's additional benefit. So if we look at investment, the traditional, uh, just 
unsheltered taxable stocks, uh, the amount, the seed is uh, not deductible. And then you grow and the harvest, uh, all of these capital gain, you have to pay tax. And the traditional IRA, the seed is uh, um, deductible and the growth is not taxable until you sell it. So, however, the Roth IRA, you know, the seed is not deductible, but the, the growth and the harvest uh, is deductible, you know, same as uh, life insurance. Okay. So now the strategy is always uh, first, if I can take advantage of tax deduction now, I always take advantage of it. Okay. So for example, you know, this family, they're making 1.9, 1.2 1. 1. million, the tax will be $500,000. So we want to take advantage of that first, just using 401k and the defined benefit plan, cash balance uh, and profit sharing. Uh, we can put the over a million dollar away. Now we can save half million dollar tax, right? So now the way you do it in the future is uh, because these are taxable when you retire. So there are ways you can do it. One way is of course, you can convert it to Roth RA and uh, especially like when you donate, when you have a donation situation, you have a lot of deduction, right? You can convert during these years. And I'll give you an example later on uh, how you can take advantage of that. Uh, and then on the other hand, you can just donate. Instead of converting to Roth IA, you can just donate to charity, okay? Donate to charity, you don't have to pay capital gain tax anymore. Plus, on top of that, you got the, the deductions, okay? And then here are four ways to donate. Uh, the first, very simple, you just donate to a public charity, uh, and you can create your own public charity as well, right? Make sure you, know, you have a board of directors who's not uh, your family members. For example, Bill Gates have uh, his uh, co-founder of Microsoft, uh, and uh, Warren Buffett as uh, his uh, board of directors, uh, and plus he and his wife, right? So this way, you know, you have some supervision is so it's not self-dealing. So you have a public charity, that's 501c3 organization. So you can have 60, up to 60% of AGI deduction every year. Uh, and then, um, if it's a stock or real property, up to 30% deduction. Um, so, uh, and then donor device fund. So donor device fund is, uh, if you're not interested to operate a public charity uh, and you don't know who you want to donate it to, then open a donor device fund. Uh, the, the beauty is it's very simple. It's, you know, low cost because it's basically a trust, uh, and using your own social security number. So it does not uh, require like an entity or filing tax return or anything. So it's just like your IRA. So very simple, you can open it at uh, um, Fidelity or Vanguard, anywhere. Okay, and you can deduct uh, just like the charitable organization, 60% of AGI. And then of course, if it's stock or real property, that's 30%, okay? And private foundation. So private foundation uh, is a little bit more costly than donor device fund. However, you come with all kind of, a, you know, you can invest in anything you want to invest, okay? And uh, it's an entity. So you can use a lot of strategies. For example, we just help the client to um, buy a, a key person life insurance, in the private foundation. So we basically converted a, a regular income uh, uh, to taxable income into uh, eventually capital gain tax-free, uh, capital gain, right, as an investment. So private foundation has all the flexibilities and um, you can deduct up to 30%. Uh, uh, and of course, you know, if you want more, you want 60%, you can designate it as a public foundation, just like public charity. And uh, 
the only thing is, as I said, you know, you invite a few other than your family members as board of directors, uh, then you can deduct up to 60%, okay? And it's not difficult to maintain that. Uh, and also it, you need to meet the requirement that uh, a third of your revenue is coming from other than yourself, okay? That's also easy to meet. You can do fundraising, you can do some you know, programs and uh, charge program fees. Um, also the first five years is exempt. You don't have to comply with that rule. Okay. Now the private foundation, you need to distribute 5% of your assets uh, every year to a charity or you can do an operation by yourself. You can spend 5% of your assets every year. Uh, that's also okay. Yeah. And then, but if it's a public foundation, you don't know, subject to this kind of a rule. And then charitable LLC. Charitable LLC is a, the, it's a very flexible and it's, you can be very creative. It's very interesting. So um, that's taking advantage of uh, the flow through theory as well as the charitable theory. So it's a good combination. Uh, so this is how it works. So for example, um, let's just use, uh, so Zuck, Zuck, Zuckberg's uh, foundation is a, a charitable LLC, okay? China Zuckberg Initiative is called. So the way it works is, uh, you donate your stock or your real estate, your assets, you in into the LLC, and then the LLC, you have two members. And the majority is uh, uh, your donor advice fund or your charity or your private foundation or your you know uh, public foundation. Okay, so that's ninety nine percent. So that give you the deduction. Okay, that gives you the deduction because it's a donation, right? So and now you hold 1%, this way you have full control, you are the manager. And the beauty is also, this is, you get a deduction, but the assets, you don't have to give the assets to the charity right now because you're basically giving a paper assets with, with the shares to the charity, right? And then you get a deduction. So the beauty is now you can continue to run this LLC. You can continue to invest using these assets or you can still operate these assets. That's the beauty. So you really didn't give the cash to charity. You really you know, just using, you know, here, uh, continue to use it. Of course, eventually when you sell it, you need to give to the charity, okay? And then also even beautiful, what's beautiful is a, Say it's a real estate, you put it in there, right? You can still borrow money from this. And then now you say, okay, this money now, it's not really yours, it's a charity's. So you need a collateral, okay? So the collateral, it could be, you know, other, and a lot of time it's life insurance. So you, that's a good way to even, again, leverage your life insurance. Otherwise it's sitting there anyway, right? So you can take cash out, and you can invest in other places as well. So this charitable LLC is really flexible and uh, um, you know innovative use of the charitable strategy. So the other charitable strategy is trust. So instead of giving money to the charity directly or to the donor device fund directly, you give money, donate money to a charitable trust first. And the beauty is the money will sit in the trust. So the trust is like your hedge fund. It'll continue to invest and continue to grow. And then the interest earned or the dividend earned goes to you, okay? So it goes to you every year. And then when you pass away, when you pass away, the principal, goes to the charity. And this charity could be the donor advice fund, your family foundation, you know, continue the legacy. Okay. So for example, and this is a real case. We just changed the person's name. So this, they have a real estate 
with the cost basis of $2 million and the contribution, the total sales price is $10 million. So you have $8 million capital gain. Now you put into a trust. The first thing is this now is the trust selling the property. So you do not have any capital gain. Okay. So you don't have to pay any capital gain tax. This $8 million is totally exempt. Okay. So you save. Um, so 20% of 8 million, uh, $160,000, right? Uh, no, a uh, million, 1.6 million. So right away um, from uh, uh, cap, federal tax, you know, if you live in California, another uh, 10%, right? So on top of that, you got a deduction. You got a de deduction that's, you know, five five point nine million dollar deduction. And you can use it in the first year, but a lot of times you don't have so much income the first year, right? Uh, so even you convert all your four one k's, probably you don't have this. Uh, so we can use these over, you know, next few years with all your conversion of four one k with all your uh, other um, W two or S corp, uh, all kind of incomes. We can use these to deduct. So then um, the, the interest you earned, uh, let's say you earn 7% and we distribute to you 4%. So this interest flow to you. And if you want, even you pass away, you can pass to your children. As long as when this trust is set up, they have a social security number and date of birth, they can take advantage of this. Okay, it could be you know, multi generation, and even beauty, even more beautiful is that we can set this fund as a private placement life insurance policy. So this way, that four hundred thousand dollar a year income is tax exempt. So you don't have to report the income tax on this this one. Okay, so that's even better. And then whatever is not distributed will continue to grow there. And when you pass away, it will pass to your children without estate tax, without capital gain tax, nothing. Yeah, so it's a good estate planning as well. If you have, have high estate, you know, donate some money into this trust and then it'll continue to grow. And the beauty, basically, the theory is very simple. Basically, instead of a, you know, chopping your principal off by the tax amount, you keep the principal, and then the time value of the money, you continue to receive, reap the fruit, reap the dividends, the investment return every year. So, in this way, you know, you um, still pass. On to children, um, right? You still pass on to children uh, plenty of money, and uh, but you, you receive so much more money while you're alive. And then, if you want to leverage it, you can add, a, use some of the income stream to buy a life insurance. Okay. So the life insurance will leverage even more and give you liquidity over time. And when you pass away, again, you have a, a big nest to pass on to children uh, without uh, uh, capital gain tax or income tax, right? And then if your estate exceeds the exemption, uh, you can create an islet and then they can uh, avoid the uh, estate tax as well. So with that said, you know, charitable strategies, char is really, if you just from a tax saving perspective, it's a powerful tax shelter. And then the best way to donate is donate appreciated assets because you get a double benefit. One is you escape the capital gain tax, two, you get the deduction. And remember, in theory, you know, once you donate to a charity or donor advice fund, it's not your money anymore. These are public. However, 
you still have the full control, right? It's still your money in a way. You know, you can still fully use it. Bill Gates uh, is traveling all over the world using his money in the in his Gates Foundation. So it's the same theory. You know, you can put it into your foundation and you can use it. To, you call the shot, you have the full control. You can travel all over the world for whatever charitable purposes you say. Okay, so this, it's really a good advantage. Uh, you definitely want to take advantage fully uh, on uh, using the this strategy. With that said, open for questions. Okay, any questions? Okay, we only have a few people here, so feel free to mute, unmute yourself, uh, Tao Yan, Chen, Lili. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself, uh, and uh, you can also open your video. We can see you, and so you can ask uh, whatever questions you have. I can stop. Recording, so...